Hello and welcome to Geeks of the Roundtable Let's Plays. I am Tim of Not Another Reviewer, and what you see in front of you is Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars for the Super Nintendo. Uh, we're going to do something a little different this time around. Uh, me and the, several of the other geeks recorded a podcast together um, st like a month ago, I think. And uh, we're just going to go ahead and let you listen to that uh, because uh, some technical difficulties have left us unable to uh, release that in the form that we had hoped to. So we're just going to release it this way. Uh, oops. Hopefully uh, you enjoy. And I'm going to shut up now, and I'm going to go ahead and start that audio. Alright, we're going to finally get this podcast on the road in three, two, Wait, one. wait, hold on a second! No, I'm just kidding. Just fucking wait. You're fired. <laughs> oh, well, I guess we're starting there now. Nah, nah just go ahead. Yes, three, another two, review. One in. Do a real <laughs> intro. <laughs> That was the real intro. No, 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 no. I'll put that on the end or something, I promise. We just need a real intro. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Geeks of the Roundtable podcast for January 5th, 2014. With me today is Tim Bauer, not another review. You're fired. Oh, jeez. <laughs> that took long. Brilliant. On a side note, hello, also everybody. Also with us today is uh, When Bad Movies Attacks, Josh Hodgetts. Hello, everyone. The Sofa Reviews, Matthew Hartley. Hello. And uh, Retro Nightmares, General Zilla. Hello. And today we're going to talk about uh, something that's very near to all of us being on YouTube, and that is the recent changes to YouTube and their format and their policies. Really, especially in their uh, policies regarding copyrighted material. Um, so, yeah, Tim, you were talking about some of the specifics of why that's entirely bullshit a second ago. Uh, yeah, the the main the main bit that I think uh, all this is bullshit is the fact that they want to crack down on let's plays, but not so much that you can't have let's plays on your channel. Just more to the fact that the developers and YouTube and publishers don't want you to make money from those Let's Plays. That way YouTube still gets the money, you know? that That's probably the biggest bit where the policies actually explicitly state they're fine with you having videos of their gameplay. They just don't want you to profit from from making those videos, even though you add your commentary and it's your own gameplay experience. And that's kind of the whole point of Let's Plays. And you think it'd be almost like free advertising from the games, because if you go by the logic that, you know, oh, if somebody's watched someone else play this game, now they're not going to go buy the game. Like, that's completely insane. Oh, that, ha that has nothing to do with it. Um, a lot of the times, though, on that vein... There are people that will, you know, do a let's play or review the game and give it a very negative, a very negative review, and then out come the copyright strikes to take the videos down. Where you know people don't, developers don't realize that there are people out there who, if they know a game is bad, that makes them want to get it even more. I have I have a section of my collection that is just specifically games that I know other people hate and I absolutely hate, and I love having them. You know? Come on, game oh, designers. What were you thinking? I mean, the whole... Not only that, but, um... No, go ahead, Matt. I've been talking too much Matt, already. Go. Yeah, so, but not only that, there's also the case where um, games will be developed uh, when the publisher, even if it's a loved game or a game that might garner some attention for an interesting idea, and especially if it's a smaller publisher, like with the uh, recent Gary's incident, I think it's called. Um, you, you, people are just going to look at you with disgust when you take down something, especially if it's by a beloved uh, critic or someone that's well known. It, it's going to just cause negative backlash. I mean, when Sega started taking down videos like a year ago or something, uh, the um, 
uh, Shining Games, Shining Force 3 uh, videos, uh, people went against them because although they would generally like Sega, people tend to be on their side. Because they were doing this douchey a uh, action, people immediately turned on them and called them, called them out for it. I'd just like to add that it isn't actually the uh, game developers that have a problem with this, not like Sony, Microsoft, Nintendo. It's actually the false claims behind it which is the problem. Um, people such as like uh, Nerd Cubed, who have been hit by Valve, um, saying that like, he did a Let's Play on the uh, Portal 2, and they said that they got, he got a claim saying that um, this, this had copyright ID from Valve. And he went and contacted Valve, and they said, We did not make the claim. We don't have anything, you know, we don't have any problems with people making YouTube videos about our game. So this claim come out of nowhere, but the way YouTube's set up now that if there is a claim, you have to wait four weeks, um, and in those four weeks they can discuss it, but if not, if they don't get a response within four weeks, um, then the ad revenue goes back to you. But for those four weeks that the video's up, the author doesn't earn a single penny from it. So if if you really wanted to screw somebody over, you could just keep content in ID um, every single video they make for a month, and then for you know for nearly a month solid, they won't earn a single penny from any of their hard work. That's the problem with YouTube at the moment. Yeah, that, that whole content ID system is just it's it's stupid. There's there's this YouTuber I can't remember him. He, it was someone that I never really watched. But he, he sort of disguised himself. He set up a fake account and everything, and he content claimed one of his own videos, and it worked successfully, despite him being like pretty much a brand new account and everything. And it's just how how does shit like that get through? I think part of the thing is um, with the way YouTube YouTube operates. Uh, this has been a very long, uh, long lasting problem. Um, they have set up a system where if you have a copyright claim, it immediately sort of activates, uh, or kind of, basically YouTube washes themselves, of the, washes their hands of the situation, just moves it on to let the participants involved deal with it rather than them actively set, uh, trying to be a mediator on the issue. So it just goes, yep, that's fine, you two deal with it, and uh, kind of cuts all communication from that point on. Well, this this was a thing that we pointed out um, in a live stream that I, t I tested a few days ago, where Tim and Mike helped me out. Um, their YouTube, in, their IT, their ID uh, matching system itself isn't actually anywhere near as good as it should be. Because um, I mentioned this, but in GTA 5, in GTA 5, the sirens um, from the police cars Gosh. actually get matched as a 70s jazz song. Hello. Yeah, that's kind of ridiculous. Yeah, it, it, yeah, their their ID match saying that a seventies jazz song is the sirens from GTA Five, and that can issue a content ID and possibly even a strike against that person's account is quite ridiculous. See, I'm not entirely sure how the uh, the strike system works though, because I've actually had a couple of content ID matches for. Uh, for Nintendo Music, because sometimes I'll randomly use uh, Nintendo Music in videos that aren't even video game related, and those got caught, but I didn't get any strikes against me, so I'm not entirely sure how the whole strike thing works, and if that has any effect of these new policy changes. Well, I've kind of backed yeah, up the other striking system. Go, on, Go ahead, Josh. Ah, yeah. Okay, I was just gonna say that I noticed the other day when I was going through my uh, system settings because I had to, I had to make the account that's not just my Google Plus account uh, verified for longer videos. Um, it just said that I wasn't in good standing with content ID match strikes. I don't know what that means or what it affects, but apparently I'm just not in good standing with that. Well, it, it's strange that you say that because every single one of my videos except the two have matched ID from somewhere else and apparently mine's in perfect standing I can record, you know, upload three hour videos for crying out loud so I don't have a clue why you're hit and and I blatantly rip off films I mean, come on, let's be fair, they are, you know, somewhat reviews of footage so I don't know how you can you can be slammed and I can't 
one thing that, um, as I mentioned before we started recording, uh, there was a really good podcast um, posted up on YouTube. It's an hour-long uh, address the cess on the issue, which features Total Biscuit and a few others. Uh, but they pointed out one thing, that the system in place seems to be very automatic, and that there are automated systems to seek out potentially copyrighted material, and they're getting stuff copywritten, uh, like copyright strikes from people like THQ, who just don't exist anymore. So it's like just sort of archaic systems not really cleaned up yet. Yeah, oh, that's. Yeah, I mean, oh. Go ahead. Content. <laughs> you. Well, that was the thing I brought up during the live stream Josh was talking about there. By the way, we do live streams, so uh, pay attention for that. But, uh. <laughs> <What? clears throat> we'll do more. But anyway, uh, it's just the idea that they could do a lot for, you know, the economy of the different countries they serve if they made it less automated and made, like, centers for people to actually, it's their job to, like, investigate these claims and actually, you know, follow up on them and stuff and not just let them sit. I have a channel, uh, Sharpest Hammers in the Toolshed, where I do Let's, Let's Plays videos with a friend of mine, and we did Portal 2. And that first episode got flagged for Valve. But then after, like, the 30 days went by and the flag went away, it got flagged for something else that was totally un unrelated. And then 30 minutes go by, or 30 days go by, and that's gone. And now there's another one that's totally unrelated, and we have no idea who the fuck they are or why they contact I content ID match for Portal 2. It's, it's really weird. They need to really put a human element into it so that you can actually get support other than the YouTube forums, which are horrible, and just people that are like, Arr! YouTube is getting worse! Arr! You know, it's like, I'm not getting any help there. What the fuck? Your Portal 2 video has been content ID flagged by Chef Boyardee's brand. <laughs> I'm actually checking through my channels now to see if I have any that aren't in good standing, but I'll let you know, because I'll make it around to that one. Honestly, the entire thing kind of rings of, uh, if you guys remember Sopa. More like yeah. Nopa! <laughs> but no, I mean, just the the similarities in that with Sopa, anyone, legitimate or not, could just claim, you know, your site was uh, guilty of copyright infringement and it would just be taken down. Well, this was a thing that we mentioned in the, in the, uh, somewhat live stream again where it was even if you do make a claim that doesn't mean that okay I don't have to put this the person who's making the claim doesn't actually have to have any authority over the content ID itself it can just be almost like a, a whistleblower but YouTube would rather listen to one whistleblower than the actual person and it, it makes no sense this is why this when Tim brought up about the there being a centre I mean Obviously, there's that much content being uploaded every single day that it's impossible to monitor it all. But if they have, say, 200 claims a day, that's something that a team of 10 people probably could do. It's just it's just ridiculous on YouTube's behalf to spend so much money on their servers and Google brought them out, so they haven't got any spare, you know, but surely got some spare chains lying around. So just invest in a few people for crying out loud. I don't know if it would work. I mean, um,. Again, going back to the address the cess thing, one one of the thing they uh, things they brought up is uh, I forget what it is, but something like for every second uh, or for every minute or something, three hours of content is uploaded or something ridiculous like that. So it is actually a huge database of information, uh, and these automated things uh, sitting through it all for any little nitpick it can find. It's I do wonder if maybe they've just built themselves this super complex web of legal conundrums that they just don't want to get involved in. Well, let me let me put it to you this way, and here's how flawed the system really is. I did a... I did a video on one of my channels, Ramblings of a Mad Bro, that I don't, I don't do that anymore. And this was one of the reasons why I got pretty discouraged by this. But I was bitching about Metallica. And uh, I made a joke near the end of the video... Where I said, you know, Metallica complains about being a band that makes music and people download their music and oh no, they can't, you know, they don't make enough money, even though they obviously do, you know, and it's just really the thing to blame is their their 
you know, ever ever lowering record sales because they suck these days. But I put in like a 14 second long like rendition of the theme song of the thing where I I showed a music video of me playing the theme song of Ramblings of a Mad Bro except playing the actual instruments and stuff. Both the Return trailer and the Metallica video got flagged, even though they were definitely not Metallica songs. But that's who I got flagged by, was, you know, Metallica's representation. Like, I ripped off one of their songs or some shit. Well, this is the thing as well with music, especially. But, I mean, like, look look when the claim first came out, this new update and how everybody's getting screwed over. On the front page of that day, 12 million views in one day, keep in mind was Brian's death on Family Guy. Now, I'm pretty sure Family Guy is owned by, I'm not exactly sure who, but isn't it like ABC or Fox or one of the big companies? The people that have it's their Fox, own... It's Fox, I think. Oh, there we go, Fox. So, you know, they have their own... Um, is it Viacom? Not Viacom. They have their own version of Netflix down there, um, where you can only get Family Guy episodes. Am I, am I right there? Wasn't it Hulu Q- or something? Or was that something? Yeah, Hulu, like there we go. Hulu. I mean, if you mention, if you put a Family Guy sound track in there, Hulu will flag that shit like nothing. But yet this video was up there, seen at 12 million views on a user who had like five videos, like 300, 300 subscribers, and two of his videos were Minecraft Let's Play. You know what I mean? It's like clearly you didn't make that. So how is that video still allowed there? So YouTube clearly let that slide just so they can make a few quid. Is it, mon- is it monetized? Is it days later? Is it monetized? I, I imagine I'm pretty sure it was, but I don't know who the claim, who the ad revenue was going to. If it was either the actual claim me or the user, which well, I highly doubt. But either way, YouTube's taking their cut. If it showed a, if it showed a, an ad before it or an ad on the screen, it was monetized by the or on the video itself. It was monetized by the user. But if ads sh- appeared next to the video or anywhere else on the screen, it was YouTube. So how how could this video be allowed there? I mean, I'm, I, the reason why I had to cancel my old account was because I uploaded some uh, Freddy Got Fingered footage. <laughs> Within, I mean, yeah, I mean that only had like literally about five seconds of footage in there, and that got flagged, and I got a I got a strike against me, which means I couldn't upload longer videos, and that video that account was a mess anyway. But for that to do that, and then you Google. You know, your YouTube, um, Freddy Got Finger footage now, you can get it anywhere, it, there's no ads, you just go straight onto it, and it makes no sense. Just fuck YouTube, basically, that's, that's the way it's going at the moment. It's discouraging issues. And yes, we're all aware of the irony that we are ranting about YouTube while using YouTube to post said rant. Yeah, I mean, it's, um... Providing this doesn't get flagged, I guess. Oh, okay, here it is. Uh, the mysterious company that I was telling you about. Because first, this video got flagged by Valve. And then that claim got released. And then you're not going to believe this bit. But then, there was a content match with EA. But that got released. So you'd think it'd stop right there at EA. But no, that got released. Then, Discovery Digital Media got a hold of it next. Okay, I don't know who the fuck they are. Well, I mean, you kind of expect EA to just be dicks in any situation. EA, yes. Um, another thing I heard as well was uh, sometimes things, like specifically with music, it might not even be the original people that made the music that flags them. Uh, it could be someone that holds the uh, license to the music that flags them after person was originally given permission by the band or something um, from, uh, I remember uh, I think I remember one of Spoonie's videos was flagged because he used uh, because of the theme tune he uses even though he had direct permission from the band to use that theme tune and it wasn't the band that flagged them YouTube just silenced his videos yeah I remember that because he has like written permission from the band to use their track as his theme song, but YouTube still just took it down. I think I I think I found another bit of goofiness too. Like I we played uh, the Legend of Zelda for an episode, and that got flagged for the audio, but 
I play Metroid Fusion, and we did Metroid Fusion in another series, and it didn't get touched. It's like, now, don't you think the newer intellectual properties of Nintendo should be guarded more than the classic ones? Because both, both of them that I got flagged for the audio were either Super Mario Brothers, the original, or Zelda, the original. <laughs> but everything else is left alone. It's possible that it was uh, they were targeting specific things that they are making products based on. So, uh, going with Z- uh, Zelda and uh, Mario, they've had albums released for recent games, or they've had compilation albums for their anniversaries. Whereas Metroid hasn't had a game in a few years, and they kind of seem to not want to really a- acknowledge Metroid's existence that much. Hey, they did in 3D Land, or not 3D Land, uh, Nintendo Land. True, but more specifically, that um, they're not really doing anything anything to celebrate Metroid or releasing any new games with albums attached, so they might not really be uh, as interested in trying to make copyright claims on any videos involving their work on that series, whereas Zelda and such are having recent games and uh, albums released and such, so they might be it, it might be a very targeted thing is all I'm trying to say. Kind of like what Sega did with the Shining Force thing. I just had to uh, Google something quickly. I just wanted to make sure that what I was reading was correct. Um, Mike Biffle uh, created a game called Thomas Was Alone, if anybody's ever heard of that. And according to according to his Twitter, um, he's pissed off with a, a place called Indie Music because they've put claims against his game that he made on his YouTube account. So I guess the post question there is... Yeah, but I guess the question there arises: Did he make the music, or did he sample music, or something? Um, I should point out: I'm not trying to defend YouTube or the people making claims. I'm just trying to see, try to explain things as best as I can see them. Because honestly, this does seem like a mess that needs to be fixed badly. That honestly Um, is a fair question too. Because if like he composed the music, then yeah. But if he just like appropriated the music, then there might be a thing there. It's it's more like um, oh shit, I can't remember his name. Creator of Minecraft, what's his name? Fuck. Uh, Notch. Notch. Notch Hesson. Yeah, it's it's like it's it's basically like Notch uploading a let's play on his own game and getting a claim against somebody else. Because Mike Biffle apparently is the sole developer of Thomas Was Alone. So unless he contracted out the music to somewhere else just for the game, I, I can't imagine why he's being stung. I don't understand how it's just like, you know, a content creator can upload their own content and then get a claim from something else, you know, like this, the Thomas is Alone developer. I mean, that's crazy. It's, it doesn't, it's like it doesn't even matter that you either have written consent or it's even your own original content. Like, a, my Buck Bumble review was the very first review that was denied monetization on YouTube. And so... I sort of went to links that I haven't gone to ever since to sort of tell YouTube it's like it's in fair use. I actually emailed Ubisoft, who made the game, and they sent me an email back giving me written consent that I could do what I did. They watched the video and everything, and I forwarded that letter to YouTube, and they said, eh, no, doesn't matter. Well, see, <clears throat> there literally is nobody at YouTube, so... Like, I'm starting to be convinced this, that their form letters are just too form. There is no actual person that probably saw your message. Yeah, it does strike me that they're not... Uh, like I say, it, they're, they're very much hands-off. It's just something that the parties involved have to deal with. But I don't. But even in that case, it's like... Surely no one flagged the video, they just denied it. Or whatever automated machine they've allowed has denied it. And honestly, I see a lot of videos that talk about how to get around this sort of thing, and it usually has to do with, like, making sure that your form letter or whatever the fuck you send to them to appeal to them is well-written and concise and cites all these things, uh, copy the copyright laws that you follow and are you're under and stuff like that. And it's like, so basically what you're telling me is people who 
can write more nicely get more benefits than people who should just inherently have these rights anyway. It reminds me of an old thing where it's it's not what you can do or what you know, it's that you talk with the right accent and you can dress in the right clothes. Well, this this is another thing. If anybody's actually saw Dan Ball's um, video about this, addressing all the facts for this, apparently one of the uh, one of the people over at the Escapist, Gavin, whatever his name is, um, actually wrote a song, uh, put it on YouTube, and somebody ca uh, filed a complaint against him, claiming he stole music from himself. Miracle of Sound guy. Yes, that's a that's him. Yeah, I remember hearing about that. Uh, I actually think it worked differently. Um, he put the music on his YouTube site, I think, and he made it for The Escapist. The Escapist put it on their YouTube thing, and then uh, they, I think The Escapist one got flagged, even though it wasn't by him. It was really weird from what I remember. It, it's just ridiculous, basically. It's just like, it's beyond a mess, and it's making it so difficult for people to actually get involved with YouTube now that it isn't actually a uh, a secure way of putting footage and, and videos on there because it only takes one claim and you'll never make money from it again. I think it does make me wonder what Sorry, go on. Now you go first. Okay, I mean uh, one thing I remember, um is everyone here familiar with a YouTuber called Thunderfoot? No. 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 Basically, he made uh, scientific videos that uh, went against creationists, uh, pointing out their, the, the failures in their arguments, and he specifically went after one guy called Venom Fang X, um, who then turned around and discovered the false DMCA action you can make. Uh, not that it's actually called false DMCA, but he was DMCAing work. Um, but this eventually did lead to legal action, because doing a false DMCA is perjury. But I'm not sure how that works with these big companies and so on with fair use, because I don't know how... There's this like grey area where they can get away with this because YouTube lets them, but at the same time they might be claiming what they might be doing is illegal. But then what they're saying is what we're doing might be illegal as well, so it's... It's confusing because, to me anyway, YouTube hasn't defined its own terms in that regard. Well, basically, it's the idea that there is a set law for how copyright is handled. But the problem is YouTube is international, so there's different copyright laws in every country. And basically what YouTube says is, well, here's our policy, and it has a little bit from every piece of copyright law. That way we're covered no matter where we are. We have just enough protection for each country that there can't be any complications with how the laws are interpreted anywhere because we have an amalgamation of everything so that it covers our ass for any reason which basically means as soon as there's a content dispute they are no longer involved it's all about litigation and lawyers which basically uh, if somebody has a content uh, and a falsified content match against you but they're a large corporation that can afford lawyers and litigation. They can drag it out until you can no longer afford to counter sue. So basically, it's over, it's done, and you're broke. Well, uh, on that note, somebody name one user who's willing to spend upwards of 10, 20 grand defending a video over, over, over court. Because if I make a claim and I say, right, we'll go to court, who's going to stand up to them? Not a single person will. And I mean, I do... I think we're all... We're all fully aware that, you know, legally and just to keep track of all the data, YouTube is a logistical nightmare, regardless of who you have in charge of it. But at the end of the day, I think that, much like Facebook right now, I think that there are a lot of people who are kind of just waiting for the next YouTube to come across and all it's going to take is is somebody who's uh who's got the time and money to make the new YouTube and you know people are going to eventually the bullshit has gotten to a point that it's they're going to all 
everyone on YouTube will flock to that new Twitch place. Going to Wait, what'd you say? I said Twitch is going that way. It seems to be literally a way that you can stream stuff, still get ad revenue, ad revenue and there's very little chance you can get pulled down. But even then, they're going to be uh, subject to the same pressures as time goes on. Um, it's one of those things where uh, there have been alternatives, and they've come up and the, they've come and gone as time's uh, uh, gone. Uh, with you know, Blip, for example, was one everyone went to, and now that one has started severing a lot of its user base. Uh, there are other ones I remember where it just direct monetization, and no one goes there because it's just a terrible site. So it's it's got to be a site that works for in how YouTube works as a search engine, but also uh, is user friendly as well in the way that YouTube used to be at least like oh Jesus uh, eight years ago. I tell you what was quite funny about that Vimeo. Um, the admins got told to clean up and you know quality content only basically, and they laughed and openly mocked people who were uploading video game footage. So. <laughs> their admins were just basically laughing in the face of users, and now they're fucked. So who's laughing now, Vimeo? No. I remember Vimeo, but I can't remember... Did they... I seem to remember watching Ulysses 31 on there, or Veo, I can't remember which. But that's always been the thing, there's always going to be alternatives, like uh, Daily Motion is another one. But daily motion just doesn't really seem very good. Um, I'm not entirely sure what kind of happens with it, but it, it seems more corporate than YouTube. That's it, man. All I know is I, I think uh, another thing is, and even with this video, with like us, it's YouTube is a nightmare to even get noticed in too. Like, unless you already have 50,000 views, you're not making it to the front page anytime soon.